Hey, we're back! I hope you all had a good holiday. Now, who is ready to talk game design? We've all had those moments in Civilization or Total War where we've won. We know we've won. There is absolutely nothing the computer can do to come back. But it's going to take another four hours of repetitive slogging before the computer realizes that we have won. Before we get to the win screen and the game acknowledges our victory. Even in great strategy games like those, this is often the weakest part of the experience. So today, let's dive into why it happens and why it's so hard to design around. The problem of having to sit around and go through the motions to finish a strategy game that any reasonable human being would clearly say you've already won stems from one very important but very difficult to manage aspect of strategic game design. Uncertainty. Uncertainty in a strategy game is that element that makes you adjust your plan, makes you reassess the situation and consider all the tools you've built up to that point in a new light. Without uncertainty, a strategy game simply becomes a puzzle. And there's nothing wrong with a puzzle, in fact, they work some of the same mental muscles. But the key difference is that once you know how to solve a puzzle, all that's left is the execution. And that's not what we're looking for in a strategy game. In a strategy game, we're interested in the planning, in coming up with strategies and testing them in all sorts of scenarios. And the only reason to re-plan, to continue to strategize, once you've got a strategy that's working, is because the environment that your strategy is working in might change on you. Uncertainty forces you to plan for contingencies and to rethink your strategy because that's what we play strategy games for. Now it's important to not confuse uncertainty with randomness here. Uncertainty comes in lots of forms and randomness can be one of them, but more often uncertainty comes in the form of hidden information, unexpected events, or even simply playing against a player who might make some unpredictable moves that will force you to reconsider your strategy. Taking civilization as an example, you'll find that the early phase of the game is filled with uncertainty. The map is almost blank. You don't know who your opponents are, where they are, or even how big of a land mass you're on. Then, as you start to explore, your plan shifts as you discover what resources are within reach, as you run into other civilizations and have to work around their borders, or even as you discover goodies in those friendly villages, or the less friendly barbarian camps. But you'll notice that this uncertainty slowly declines over the course of the game, bottoming out once most of the early wonder building is done and you've figured out which victory condition most of the computer players seem to be going for. Now, this lack of uncertainty is compounded by the fact that, in Civilization, like in most single-player strategy games, advantages are cumulative. In most single-player strategy games, if you're doing well, you'll have access to more units, more resources, more abilities or powers to help you deal with whatever gets thrown at you. This creates two problems. First, at the point where many strategy video games devolve into being puzzles, because you no longer have to adjust your strategy to win, you've actually already solved the puzzle. There's nothing engaging or challenging left to strategize around while finishing the game, because you're already so far ahead. But second, and perhaps more interesting, is the fact that this makes uncertainty much harder for the designer to build in, as for the player who's already way ahead, a minor uncertainty is practically irrelevant. It essentially doesn't function as an uncertainty anymore, because the player is winning so hard that they don't have to change their plan at all to deal with it. If a game suddenly hits you with an unexpected penalty that results in you producing two less food per turn, well, if you're already producing a surplus of 50 food every turn, you don't really have to change what you're doing, do you? Oh no, my two food, what am I gonna, ah, uh, oh no. And, like, if some opponent decides to attack you with their flintlock rifle squads, but you've got laser tanks, you're just gonna sweep them aside, no problem. Their attack may have technically been unpredictable, but it sure didn't give you any reason to rethink your strategy. And this is a problem because if minor uncertainties are no longer effective, that brings up the question of major uncertainties. And major uncertainties are difficult to design because as much as we've talked about uncertainty being a good thing, in some ways uncertainty is antithetical to strategic play. Creating a strategy for anything involves making predictions about the future, about what results your actions will have. The more information you have, the more effective a strategy you can create. Or, to put it another way, the less uncertainty there is, the more strategic you can be. So how do we balance this? How do we balance creating strategic play while giving the player enough uncertainty that they need to keep making new strategies to deal with or anticipate the unknown? Well, for one thing, we can build our AI with this in mind. If you've ever sat around playing strategy tabletop games with your friends, you'll know that often, at some point, somebody ends up doing something you completely didn't expect. 
and it may not have even been a great play on their part, but it forces you to craft a new strategy. So when it comes to AI, especially in games with multiple AI-controlled variables, allowing at least one of the AI actors to play suboptimally but in interesting ways can help. Better still is hidden information, not only because it forces the players to build adaptable strategies that they can rework as more information becomes revealed, but also because it lets us build AI models that can craftily fake you out on their goal, giving you those moments where you think you've got the game in the bag, but then they slam down three roads, clinch the longest road objective, and leave you scrambling to get back ahead. And then there's one-off events. These can be a ton of fun, but they're the most dangerous option too, as it's not super fun to have a working strategy suddenly run into a random event that basically reads, oops, you lose, too bad. And unfortunately, it's really easy for unpredictable one-off events to lead to that result. Many strategy games encourage players to essentially run lean, to consume resources as fast as they can acquire them, and to acquire the bare minimum in all the categories that aren't pivotal to whatever strategy they're trying to execute, so they can spend all of their energy getting the pieces they want most. But that sort of delicate balancing act can be completely destroyed by even minor random events that affect them. Now, if the player has the ability to react, to rethink their strategy, to come up with new strategies to compensate for the event and barge ahead with a minor setback, this can actually be a good thing. But too often, it just means that all of their work is undone, and they have to reset, or more likely, just quit the game. Here, one of the best techniques I've found is to make events positive, to have unexpected random things give bonuses instead of penalties. But if you do want to put in negative events, just be sure to allow for a lot of flexibility. For example, you can make it so that the event affects players differently based on their ranking. Like, say a volcano blows up, the player in first place has to provide rescue crews, massive amounts of aid, has to divert ships for refugees and such, while the player in last place just has to provide a small amount of food to the effort. And optimally, they'll both be rewarded in some way if they successfully deal with the crisis. You can also provide players several different approaches to dealing with your events. Let's say the Earth is Dying event occurs. You can approach this by racing to colonize other planets, or you could use science to find a way to essentially terraform your dying Earth. You could use your industrial might to burrow below the surface, or rework your economy to live more in harmony with nature and let the Earth recover. This way, all the civilizations that didn't focus exclusively on spaceflight aren't simply doomed when that random event happens. Now, there are a lot of other ways to inject uncertainty into your strategy game, but hopefully this has spurred some ideas. Mainly, though, whenever you're looking at a strategy game, if you find it getting staid and stale, if you ever find yourself just going through the motions long after you already know you've won, dig in and see if the game makes use of any uncertainties in the late game. Just don't judge the designers too harshly. It's a really tough task to balance a well-honed system which you can plan and strategize around while having uncertainties that make that system always feel fresh. No one said design was easy. See you next week.